stress in the workplace. Who hasn't felt it, right? Um, we have difficult coworkers. We have challenging managers. We have unmanageable workloads, not to mention all the changes in goals, deadlines, workspace, and staff. And plus, many people don't even have privacy in their own workspace, which creates some stress, right? If you work in a cubicle with a lot of folks. And so we're here to talk about how to cope with some of that stress in the workplace, these stressors and others. So please take this information and apply it to your own personal examples you may have in your head right now. First of all, dealing with stress is all about taking control or losing control. Numerous studies indicate that people most likely to experience stress in the workplace are those who feel they have no control over their circumstances. Now, I like the word feel because that means that that may or may not be reality. Some people feel they have no control. Well, in fact, they do have certain options that they have within their control and don't realize it. But that does create stress, believing that you do not have the control. What can you use to adjust your attitude and minimize stress? Well, patience is quite a virtue, of course. Um, taking deep breaths and uh, being mindful and staying in the moment and trying to be patient. I like the phrase that Carrie Fisher has in one of her novels that says, instant gratification takes too long, which I totally agree with. Um, curiosity, and curiosity is about not seeing things as right or wrong. Black and white, it's about about being curious as to possibilities and some things that are maybe possible you're not aware of. And of course, a sense of humor. Uh, anytime you can laugh appropriately about your situation or um, see people as caricatures sometimes can really add to some levity in your own head that can give you a sense of perspective. But there are behavioral symptoms of stress, and one of the ones we see quite often is withdrawal in the workplace, which can look like apathy, and that, in fact, um, may be someone who's very stressed out, who's overwhelmed, and is shutting down. Absenteeism and lateness to work can also look like apathy and disrespect, um, but in fact, it can be about the person doesn't want to get out of bed to come to work. They're so stressed out, and so they are late. They are absent in work. Some behavioral symptoms of stress. Irritability, we see that a lot. Relationship problems. Sometimes we go home and our partner tells us that we've changed. We're more snappy with our children. We're more stressed out. And desk rage, which are things like slamming down the phone, um, muttering expletives that other coworkers can hear, um, that sort of thing. So what we want to do is come up with a plan of dealing with this stress. And the first way we want to deal, do that is through assessing what's going on. And the first one is avoiding unrealistic expectations, which can be one of the hardest things to deal with. Um, we're not sure what people are capable of. We're not sure about what their personality will allow them to do. Um, we're not sure what the economy will do. So you have to really be realistic about what your expectations are of people and situations. In some ways, you need to reality test this with others that also are part of the situation or know the situation. Redefining the situation. Uh, maybe looking at it from a manager's point of view if you're a coworker or looking at it from a vice president's point of view if you're a manager. But redefine the situation as maybe something that you didn't think about to begin with. Also, we want to alter some of what we're, our behavior, and problem solving is a big part of that. To alter the situation, you want to be a problem solver. You want to be super rational about it. You also want to communicate assertively. And you try to use the chain of command, and we always recommend you follow Duke HR policies because this makes you more credible. Uh, people who blow up or are very reactive lose credibility even if they have a right to be as angry as they are. But you want to maintain credibility so that other people um, see you as someone who they can problem solve with and resolve issues. You want to avoid unproductive conflict. 
which means you may have to say no. Well, what I like to do is give choices, like I can do A and B by Friday, or I can have C done by Thursday. Which do you prefer? Now, sometimes you will have a manager who will say, you have to have all of it done by Friday. And in that case, you have to decide if you're willing to put in the overtime, if it's a feasible thing to do, or if you want to stick by it and say, this can't be done with the resources that I have. Another thing to do is to just let go, which means you have to redefine winning. We have some people who say, well, if I let go of this struggle, if I don't take it higher, then I'm losing and my manager's winning. And what I say to that is, is what is really winning? Because if you don't have your peace of mind and you're very stressed out, even if you get the result you want, I'm not sure that that's winning. So letting go is knowing, being wise enough to know what battles you want to fight and which ones are not worth it. And how do you let go? Uh, meditation, yoga, prayer, working out, uh, whatever. Give yourself a time limit to think about the issue. And then at that point you say, I'm not thinking about this anymore today. Another facet of stress in the workplace is acceptance. And this can be perhaps the most difficult part of stress in the workplace because we're in a culture that really defines us as successful when we strive, we compete, we try to change situations and make the best out of them, we try to get ahead. And so acceptance, when we think about it, doesn't really mean giving up or giving in or losing. It certainly doesn't mean resignation to your circumstances or defeat. That's not at all what I'm suggesting. What I am suggesting is that acceptance is a decision to rise to the challenge of the situation because the benefits of the job outweigh the negatives. Now, you can certainly change positions or jobs, and that may solve some of your problem. But most of the time, we need to accept, at least for a period of time, our situation until we can change it significantly. And that may mean building resistance to stressors. And we can do that in a number of ways. And I'll just give you some examples. You're probably already doing that now. Getting enough sleep is imperative. And we neglect sleep for chores, activities, even more work at the office. So getting enough sleep is really important and helps to keep us resilient to a lot of the stressors that would irritate us otherwise. Eating nutritious meals and snacks, we all know about that. Working out, that's one of the most important things we can do to build resistance to stressors and to energize us. Developing a sense of humor about the situation. You may be someone that's considered very funny and uh, has a lot of levity, except when it comes to your job situation, and then you feel may feel like you lose all of your humor. So it's really important to look at your situation from a different point of view and develop a sense of humor about it. Spending time outside work, having fun, having fun with friends is really important to develop a different perspective. Sometimes that may mean also having fun with children, which, as you know, can definitely change your world in an instant and bring some levity and it's an interesting perspective. We also recommend things like going to synagogue, church, or temple if that fuels your spirit and also provides another perspective for you and helps you with acceptance of your situation. Getting back to nature, that can also be a spiritual element to that as well. Hiking, camping, spending time sitting under a tree with someone you love or care about, looking at nature with a sense of awe. Well, we can lose that if we spend a lot of time either in a lab or in our office, in the hospital, in an academic setting all day. And, of course, talking to a professional counselor, a pastor, a rabbi, someone who can give you a, a different way to look at things and also help you uh, build your resilience to the situation. We also talk about changing perceptions of stressors. What is this teaching me? We may not want to be taught in the moment, but sometimes most of the most difficult people in our lives can be master teachers, and their teaching is something we need to learn. Many times it's such things as patience, tolerance, giving us another perspective of diverse issues. What am I learning about myself? Am I learning that I'm more patient than I thought? Am I learning I'm stronger than I thought I was? Am I learning that I need to build more compassion towards other people? 
And that can be real difficult when you only have a slice of who that person is at work. So sometimes I tell folks there are a lot of things behind the curtain with other people, and we have no idea what they're dealing with. They could be dealing with cancer of a loved one. They could be dealing with their own health issues. They could be dealing with the death of the family, and that can also cause them to be difficult to work with. So we have to build a level of compassion for people in general since we don't know what's going on with them. You want to build strategies. Identify your sources of stress. Sometimes I have people coming in that think their sources of stress are their coworkers who are unproductive. Well, I redefine that as that's a management problem. And that doesn't mean your manager has the tools to solve it, but it does mean you need to let go of it and let management deal with it. Um, so redefine what the stress is and who maybe you're really upset with. Maybe it's not the coworker who's babbling all day. Maybe you're really upset because the supervisor's not doing something about it. Okay, and so at least you're clear on what's going on and where your stress is coming from. And then focus on what you can control. Maybe you can't folk, you can't control that person who's talking or babbling, but what you can control is how you respond to it. Do you need to take frequent breaks from your desk? Do you need to do some deep breathing? Uh, if it's interfering with productivity, do you need to take it to your supervisor? I mean, there's lots of options in front of you. And how management can help? Well, there's a lot of things you can't control sometimes as a manager, such as the workload, because you're getting your own workload, right? And managers have their own bosses, so they have their own stressors, and it just kind of trickles down. So there are only certain things managers can control. But what they can do is clearly define employees' roles and responsibilities. I think the more you can clarify and make things concrete for employees, they know what you expect, even if they don't agree with it, they feel a lot better than feeling like things are vague, um, ever-changing, they never know what to shoot for in terms of a goal. Um, so it, it, that is some control that you have in this situation. I've even had managers uh, communicate through email that there is no, there are no changes and that they don't have the information yet, but here's the email saying we're working on it. That can mean a lot to employees who are waiting for information and are, are anxious. Management can also provide opportunities for employees to participate in decisions and actions that affect their jobs. Employees want to be heard above all else, and they want to feel valued. And so if you take the time just to listen and get their input in decision-making, it doesn't mean you have to obviously implement it, but it does mean that they feel that you've heard them and that you're considering what they're saying. So any opportunities you can gather that information from them, that would be fabulous. As I mentioned earlier, if you need to talk with a professional counselor, someone who can give you a different perspective and help you build your resilience and perhaps think of other ways to deal with stress in the workplace, please don't hesitate to contact us at Personal Assistance Service. And we don't just deal with work issues. We also provide consultation, short-term counseling, referrals for any type of personal, family, or work problem. We are strictly confidential. We do go by the laws of HIPAA. And so we cannot talk to anyone about your issue. And we have situations that deal with substance abuse, marital issues, problems with an adolescent or child, parenting problems, depression, anxiety, grief, traumatic incidents. So please do not forget to, to think of us, and we are in the Irwin Square building, which also keeps us off campus and makes it even more private for you. We are available free of charge to Duke faculty and staff and members of their immediate family, so folks in your family can also use us. All you need to do is just call 919-416-1727 for appointments. And we also have early morning appointments, very early, and late afternoon appointments to suit your work needs and family needs. And we're staffed with licensed professionals that are social workers, counselors, psychologists. So with that, I hope this is helpful, and please call us if you need further assistance.